inserted in vain medicine for the mundane monotony i'm stopping this preposterous monopoly it's not for me honestly i ought to be considered an anomaly a nominee for rocking the microphone so phenomenally dropping heat so hot they say muy caliente the el presidente musical master sensei masterpiece light show burning through retinas it'll be a 10 when the earthquake registers on the richter scale this is how to the scale let's register show the shark is off the cuff. Welcome, everybody. Oh my God, that was some new music by uh, somebody I discovered uh, just today. They are called Braille, and that was their song "Advice." Uh, feet DJ Bombay. Not exactly sure what that means, but you know, I'm uh, you know I me. Mean? I'm open. I'm open. I'm, I'm always willing to you know explore my limits. You know, my musical. You know, whatever. Anyway. Um, you guys will have noticed by now that I have not been around as much as I was hoping to be. Uh, a lot of that being because I do, in fact, now have a job that I have to go to. I have to do it. And it's a very nice job, but because it has very specific hours, I am not always available when I think I'll be available. Also throw into the fa- that into the fact that you know the Russian and I we have to you know we have to figure out how to best accommodate you know what what it is we're doing now, um, which actually which is what brought up uh, today's um, topic. Do you want to be with the person you are with? It sounds like an easy question. It's not. It sounds like a difficult question. It's not. This question was put to me uh, just this past weekend. Another thing that has made getting back to you guys a little difficult because I've had a lot on my mind. Now, as far as I know, the answer is no. The Russian and I are not breaking up. But the suggestion did come up. You know, it was brought up. And if you are, I don't give you're a man, woman, straight, gay, I don't give a fuck who you are. But when the significant other in your life looks at you and feels the need to ask that question, do you want to still be with me? Do you still think that we should be together? Do you think maybe we should break up? I mean, when those questions start coming out, that is a danger. Another, you know, 15 rounds of fighting and screaming and and I was just hunched up against the door, just sloped over. I really was. And she comes out and looks at me and I look at her and I said to her, do you think we should get a divorce? And she was like, yeah, Joe, I think we, we really should. And that's what we did. Two weeks later, we were done. But you know, that's, I mean, that critical, fucked up, pivotal moment. I mean, a lot of people, you've done it and so have I, would go, no, I don't want to do that. 
I want to keep trying. But what happens when you know you shouldn't? I don't think the Russian and I have uh, gotten to that point in our relationship just yet. If anything, I mean, I love her so much, it's ridiculous. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm in my 40s. She makes me hard. <laughs> I mean, that's good, you know? You know? The other day, I woke up and I said, hey, baby. She goes, what? I'm like... How's about a quickie? And she goes, now? <laughs> and I go, well, yeah, now. I mean, this is what I'm asking. And she's like, okay, but you got to do all the work. <laughs> How do you not love that? And then about 10 minutes later, she's like looking over her shoulder going, this is your fucking opinion of a quickie? You better like come soon, dude. And, you know. <laughs> but, you know... We get close, you know, we, we get close. Everybody gets close. Everybody gets into their relationship and just thinks, you know what? This is not fucking worth it. This is too much work. This is painful. This is not what a relationship should be like. And my question is to you guys, you know, what's a relationship supposed to be like? I mean, you tell me, you know, answer the fucking question. Do you really want to be with the person you're with? You know... Do you, do you wake up in the morning and go, oh, thank God, they're there? Do you, do you open up your eyes, look at their body and say, mm, God, that turns me on? Or, mm, I really like to get some of that. I mean, I'm probably not going to because, like I said, we're in our 40s, so you know, that doesn't happen all that often. But <laughs> don't you ever just, I mean, seriously, I mean, remember that old uh, Old Spice commercial, the Old Spice wash with the... With the uh, ex-football player who would say, look at me, now look at your man. Back to me again, now look at your man. <laughs> it's like, your man will never look like me, but he can smell like me. And, you know, that, that was the whole deal, but... No, really, you, you take, a, take a quick look. Make sure they don't notice you looking, all right? L look at your woman, look at your man. You know, gay or straight, I don't care. Look at them and say, and just say, think to yourself... I like what I got. Do you? I, I was able to answer my question honestly. Yeah, I do like what I got. I look over. I see what I got. It makes me hard. That's really all I need. You know what? Anybody can talk about, oh, I love you for your personality. I love you for your sense of humor. I love you for uh, how smart you are. Uh, you know what? I, she's got a rock and bod, and I want a banger. That's really, mm, that's, <laughs> believe me, I didn't bang her the first time because she was so smart or funny. <laughs> and believe me, she wasn't banging me because of uh, my genius IQ. <laughs> Her numbers were, the number she cared about was a little lower to the left back then. But, um, look, I don't believe that uh, everybody should be together forever if they're not happy. It's, you know, it happens. You know, I've been with, I've been with uh, a lot of, I've been in a lot of relationships, you know. Uh, people might call me a serial monogamist, which is really inaccurate considering how often I cheat. But, um, but I like being in relationships. I do. I think they're fun. I think they're funny. They're comfy and they're warm. And you, when you, you when you have them, you're like, ooh, this is fun. You know, you play stupid games and you have little stupid inside jokes. And you, and you like the way that they do that dumbass shit that, you know, nobody else cares about, but you love it. I mean, there are moments that you're going to have with people that nothing else is ever going to compare to. It's never going to match up. It's never going to be anything exactly like that moment. One of my absolute favorite moments with my girlfriend was the day that my dog was getting off the sofa 
stretched out his paws, and farted right in her face. The wisp of her hair blowing back, because this was like a five-second fart, okay? It just, it was, it was one of those comedy moments that I can never duplicate, you know, without like getting an animator here from Disney, all right? I mean, it, I, I, if I could have had the camera I have now on my phone and just pointed it at them, I mean, it would be a billion hits on YouTube and Facebook and, and uh, really, it would just be ridiculous. But <laughs> she took it like a champ. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it, it, it was just one of those things that you just look at and you just feel it. You know it. And, and I don't apologize for it. I know, uh, I know that I'm not perfect. <laughs> uh, believe me, I have lots of sisters, a mother, many, many cousins, friends, ex-friends, classmates, and a girlfriend that will let you know that I am not perfect. But I got a lot of great qualities that uh, chicks and some dudes truly dig. All right? And I'm not just talking about the 63 quarters to the left. Anyway, I needed to get that out of my system. Thank you for listening in on that. I, I, I had to expel this energy out of me because... Uh, because when you have that kind of conversation with your significant other, you really can't always be as honest as you'd like to be. I mean, you, you want to be. You try to be. But you know it's never going to happen. <laughs> so, how about we do a quick story and then uh, we take a break. How about that? How about that? Okay. If you guys, actually I'm sure you have, you've heard of above Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a form of currency, which is, as far as I can tell, um, illegal. Because as far as I can tell, only governments and sovereign nations have the right to make money. That's it. And then based on that country or sovereign nation's um, GNP... The gross national product, and also how well they're doing, they you get to relate. You know whose money is worth more. American money tends to be pretty valuable these days. Japanese money not as popular these days. Uh, the euro is still good because you know it's backed up by all the European nations that use the euro dollar. Um, if you happen to be in Argentina, well, you're pretty much fucked. Uh, but the Bitcoin does not subscribe to any particular government, sovereign nation, so they don't need to abide both by those kinds of rules of, you know, give and take. Uh, but it's being used more and more and more. Again, uh, example here, the Sacramento Kings will be the first NBA team to accept the controversial digital currency that is increasingly uh, gaining acceptance in the commercial world. Uh, the basketball franchise customers can already use bitcoins to buy merchandise as it, at its team store. And by March 1st, the Kings will also start accepting bitcoins for tickets and for products online. The NBA is one of uh, a string of companies that actually you know, do accept the Bitcoin and other organizations and have recently got accepting Bitcoin you know, as payment, ushering in the, you know, the currency as the mainstream. I mean, really, Bitcoin is going to be used as commonly as the dollar, the euro, or the pound, or the peso. Okay, maybe not the peso. I'm just saying, though, they are using it. Uh, what is it? Virgin Galactic, part of Virgin uh, America, Alaska, Britain, whatever. They are now uh, accepting Bitcoin as payment, as is Overstock.com, uh, CheapAir.com. And, uh, and the university in Cyprus will accept the Bitcoin if you want to pay for books or uh, your tuition. Go fig. In any case, I got to say, I really don't like this. I really don't. I mean, I would like that, you know, as a planet, we have a universal um, 
form of payment, but um, I think we should all agree on it first before we just start doing it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I'm going to start like uh, paying for shit in bottle caps. I mean, why not? I mean, I, I decide it's valuable, so you should too. In any case, we're going to take a we're going to take a break here, and uh, we're going to hear from our musical guest Braille. You've heard their first song, "Advice," and this is their second song, "Raise the Dead." I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. Joe the shirt. Why? He's off the cuff. Mm, welcome back, everybody. Oh. Mm. Uh, please, please, please remember I am going on two days of no sleep. All right, so if I'm not as sharp as I would like to be or try to be, forgive me. As I've always said, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Anyway, we talked a little bit about Bitcoin, which, like I said, I think is, uh, well, stupid. Uh, but let's talk about some other things. Let's talk about um, Warren Buffett. You are probably familiar with the often quoted, cited, and uh, just overall mentioned billionaire Warren Buffett. Uh, he has proposed something new, uh, which is really great, uh, because this is a very sportsy time of year, you know. Uh, it's, I think we have this, what, what's it called? The, the, the Something Bowl is coming up this weekend, I think. I think on Sunday, the, the Some Water or whatever, the bowl is going to be played, right? I think, I think it's uh, the uh, uh, Seattle Sea Chickens and the Denver... Pony girls, I think. I think they're playing. Um, but uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos. Blah 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 blah. blah. And uh, I, I think way too many of you are rooting for the Broncos. That's like the whitest team ever. Not that there's anything wrong with being white, unless you happen to be black or Puerto Rican or Chinese or you know whatever. But I'm just saying. <laughs> Denver Broncos, whitest team in America. I mean, they're even whiter than the Patriots. I mean, shit, that's fucking white. But uh, if you, but if you love great football, I, I think it's going to be a great game. I think uh, I think the Seahawks are going to take it. I think they're going to win. Uh, this is Joe the Shirt's official call: Seahawks over the Broncos, twenty-six to twenty-one. That's it. That's all. Just lock it down right there. You know what? Everybody in Vegas, you know, that's it. I have called the line. All right? But anyway, we're talking about Warren Buffett. I don't know why. Because he has made a bet. It is officially known as a proposition bet. Now, what is a proposition bet? See, most bets are, okay, well, if this happens, then you pay me. Or if this happens, I pay you. A proposition bet is a little different because it involves... 
well, if this happens, and 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 this happens, well, then I'll pay you or not. Okay, Warren Buffett is offering a billion dollars to anybody uh, that registers online, uh, I think March 3rd, by March 3rd, uh, and successfully picks the winner of every game in the March Madness. Okay, just so we are clear here, I'm going to read it to you verbatim. Warren Buffett is betting a fortune that you can't. In what may be the largest sports bet in history, Buffett's Brookshire Hathaway Incorporated will pay $1 billion to, to the person who correctly guesses the winner of every game during the March Madness Classic. Quicken Loans Incorporated, the uh, contest sponsor, is paying an undisclosed premium to Buffett for his promise to pay the winner if there is one. Uh, now, the odds of correctly forecasting 67 games are pretty thin. Um, even a skilled handicapper would have about 1 in 1 billion chance of completing a perfect bracket. I'm talking it's really probably not gonna fucking happen. Uh, but if you think you are that lucky person that thinks you can do it, well, you can. Um, uh, with uh, Along with Quicken Loans founder and chairman Dan Gilbert in November, he pitched the idea of ensuring a $1 billion prize for perfect NCAA bracket. Quicken and Berkshire announced the contest Tuesday. It will open March 3rd to the first 10 million households that sign up online. The winner will have the option of taking 40 annual payments of $25 million. Honestly, I don't see how I could possibly survive on $25 million a year for the next 40 years, most likely because I don't think I'm going to live the next 40 years. But, or you can have a lump sum of $500 million. If by some bizarre chance there are like multiple winners, <laughs> um, the money would be split evenly. Uh, Quicken will also award $100,000 to each of the contest's 20 most accurate brackets that didn't exactly win, but they got close. So that uh, they can use that 100000 to um, uh, buying, refi refinancing, or remodeling their home. So, you know, you guys, uh, you know, check it out, man. Warren Buffett is offering money. I mean, what, 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 what will it cost you to uh, make your picks? I mean, really, throw the, throw the dart at the board. I mean, seriously, I mean, w w what's going to happen? All right. All right, okay. Hmm. You know what? Um, I, I want to thank you guys uh, for being here for me. Um, I needed this today. Uh, it's been, it was a long week, a long weekend. Uh, I am not accustomed to fighting with the Russian and I'm not accustomed to being uh, someplace that I really don't necessarily want to be. You no, know, I like my job. Don't get me wrong. I like my job. But if you had a choice in your life to go to work or not go to work, what would you go with? <laughs> if, if, if nothing else changed, what would you do? <laughs> anyway, Let's talk a little bit about flying. Flying is one of my favorite topics. You know why? Because everybody flies and it's very, very safe to fly, but uh, it's not really, really enjoyable or fun to fly. I mean, if, I mean, seriously, I mean, all right, let's be honest. The vast majority of us have never been in the Mile High Club. The Mile High Club is the club where you and somebody else have sex on the plane, usually in the bathroom. You've probably never done this. Um, 
I mean, I jerked off in the bathroom a couple of times, but, you know, that was just because I needed a nap, you know. Um, the vast majority of you, even more than the Mile High Club thing, are never actually going to have sex with a uh, flight attendant, female or male, or the captain, unless he's been drinking, which is actually not... Not a bad way to go. I mean, there's a good chance that he's been drinking. Um, <laughs> flying is not comfortable unless you are incredibly rich or incredibly lucky. I have been incredibly lucky a couple of times. I have never been incredibly rich. But let's talk about comfort. I believe that people who design chairs for airlines, airplanes, any type of aircraft do not give a single flying farts worth of fuck about your comfort. They do not. I think they are following their mandate, which is make it thinner, lighter, and let us compress more people into the in, into the space as we possibly fucking can because we need to make money and and I don't blame them for that thought process. I really don't. Everybody is trying to make a buck. But they actually pay people money to find this out. They pay they actually pay people money to find other things out. Here we go. A survey, a survey finds that most passengers who have tried the slimline seats don't like them. Somebody conducted a survey to find this out. I, mean, I, I want you to like just think about that for one quick second. I will give you less space, less cushioning, less comfort, and I want you to be happier about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, in a survey of 1,391 travelers, the website found that nearly half weren't sure where they had they they had uh, in slimline seats. But those who said they had tried the seats, 83% said that they were less comfortable. Well, yeah. <laughs> How about some good news? If you happen to work at uh, an airport, I mean. I have considered working at an airport. I, you know, I'm a, I was a bartender for the longest time. One of my, buddies, my best buds, Monty, he uh, works as a flight attendant, um, and it's and I've, uh, it's it's not the easiest job on the planet. No matter if you work at an airport, it's just not easy. But here, how about a job you might want? In uh, Colorado Springs Airport, uh, they recently installed three green metal containers in the terminals where travelers can deposit marijuana. Yes. See, uh, while Colorado may have legalized pot, the airports didn't. So, if you go to Colorado airports and you have weed on you, you can still get busted for it. But, they have the amnesty boxes that you can just walk up to and just drop off your baggies or your bricks if you if you show up with like a truck they they're, they're going to like get get onto you all right so don't do that but if you feel like you think okay I'm not going to make it out of here all right now what's really funny is if you get on the plane in Colorado with your baggie of weed and you land in Los Angeles well, you can bring like a, almost like a half pound of this shit with you, dude. Yeah, come on down. Um, <laughs> you know what? I, I want a job as the guy that collects the weed at the end of the day in Colorado. I'm just like, yeah, well, it's terrible. You know, all these people bringing in all this weed with them and they know they can't fly with weed. I just don't know what we're going to do with all this other than have a fucking party like a mother. Um, <laughs> in any case, 
it is time for some more music uh let's uh let's see we had main squeeze on before did we raise the dead anyway this is more music by braille uh you let me know if it works for you if it don't well then uh you can complain to them i'm joe the shirt i'm off the cuff i'll be right back Welcome back, everybody. Joe the Shirt is still off the cuff. Now, uh, I need to address some issues with you guys. Uh, among them, uh, the issue with t-shirts. If it were up to me, I would give each and every single one of you a free custom-sized t-shirt. It's not up to me. While they're not the most expensive pieces of fabric on the planet, they do still need to get paid for. So uh, any one of you that wants a t-shirt, I will give you one at cost. That's what I'm doing. That that includes uh, the production, the shipping to me, and then the shipping to you. That is what I can do. I am not making a penny off of selling anybody a t-shirt. This is not a t-shirt business. But I do want you guys to like have a t-shirt and advertise for me because I'm a greedy son of a bitch that way. Um, And you guys wear the t-shirt, you send me a picture, I'll post it. You post it on your website. You post it on your Facebook account, just like I will, just like I will on Spreaker, just like I will on Facebook, on Yahoo. You make a video, send it to me. I I will post anything. If you guys have a business, if you guys have a, a point of view that you want to get out there and you think maybe I can, you know, present it to the rest of the world, I'll try, you know. But I cannot give a free t-shirt to everybody on the planet. You know what? Uh, One of my best friends in history wants a shirt. I got to wait till I get my first paycheck from my job. Uh, One of my best uh, exes would like a couple of shirts. I got to wait. My brother-in-law, my own fucking brother-in-law wants a shirt. I gotta wait until I can afford to pay for it because I can't have the Russian paying for everything. So, uh, so guys, just chill. Believe me, um, everybody that wants a shirt will get a shirt. And the people that really, really want a shirt, they know how to get a shirt. Okay, I, I have PayPal. All right, so people who really want shirts, that you guys know how to do it. All right, I, I, I said I am not making a dime off of these things all right so i so please you know work with me on this one all right 
in any case, uh, what else do we want to talk about today? Well, let's. Uh, do you guys want to talk about more about marijuana or Satan? Well, let's talk about Satan. All right. Uh, Satan, always one of my favorite, favorite characters in uh, mythology. Um, I, unlike a lot of people or whoever, I do not believe that Satan is an actual literal being that causes all of the evil on the planet Earth or in the universe. If that's what you think, you probably need to take another bong hit. But, <laughs> but if you do love Satan and you are a big fan of his, and you know want to spread the word of Satan, which is great, I'm 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 good with that. Um, there is a. Uh, statue at the Oklahoma Capitol uh, which shows the Ten Commandments which has been argued with because it uh, it shows uh, a adjoining of religion and government which is of course is something that we here in the United States try to avoid even though that's a hypocritical piece of shit, you know, but we, we try to, but that's what we're not supposed to go with it. So, um, now nobody is requesting that they take down the statue of the Ten Commandments. No, 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 not at all. Instead, they are proposing that they put up a seven foot statue of Satan depicted as Baphomet. Um, which has a goat head, wings, and horns sitting on a throne with smiling children at his side. Now, for those of you who know the word Baphomet or try to recognize it, if you saw the movie Nightbreed, then you know what Baphomet is. Uh, if you're worried, go look it up. You'll feel really cool when you find out what it is. All right. Um, what they're going with is... If you can have the Ten Commandments, then you can have Satan or Baphomet or the devil on as well. And uh, I'm honestly good with that shit. I'm, I love mythological characters, you know. Baphomet, the devil, Jesus, Jehovah, God, Allah. Yeah, I love these guys. I mean, they're, they're, they're fascinating. I mean, why not? Anyway, moving on. All right, let's talk a little about, about oh, how about some internet uh, secrecy on adoption. Okay, this is one thing that I've really always opposed. The idea that you donate sperm, semen, cum, jizz, uh, ball batter, ball batter. Ball batter is a good one. You like ball batter, don't you, baby? Yeah, bitch, you like that ball batter. Yeah. yeah, it's thick. It's coming down your chin. Yeah, ball batter. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, ball batter. Um, you donate this stuff so that uh, infertile couples can have a baby. Great. And then um, you donate it, and it's supposed to be anonymous, and nobody's supposed to know who you are. But now, more and more, people are going online and looking for their donor parents, which I'm against, because that brings in a lot of legal issues. Remember, you gotta guys, you guys have to remember that the law does not um, excuse the rights of the child. Just because you are a quote unquote anonymous donor, see as soon as long as soon as they know who you are, you're no longer anonymous, and they can sue you for child support eighteen years worth all right mm, I think it's a bad idea. I blame uh Jason Patrick for this. If you don't understand what that reference is, look it up. Jason Patrick, uh, Donors, Anonymous, just look it up. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, I don't think it's right that you uh, try to help or you try to make a buck 
and then get punished for it because what uh, your could have been kid wants to know who you are. You know what? I've never met my father. As far as I know, as as far as I know, I've never met him. As far as I know, his name is Han- Jose Antonio Figueroa, or no, no, excuse me, Antonio Antonio Jose Figueroa. I've never met the man. Um, would I like to meet him? Sure, but if he doesn't want to meet me, I don't want to force myself on him. You know, I. I don't rape women and I don't force myself on men. I mean, unless I'm in prison. I mean, that's different, though. That's that's okay. Um, really, what? I don't expect him to care about me. Why would he? He doesn't know me. I don't care about him. I don't know him. There's a really good chance that one of my stepfathers is my actual father. I don't know, you know, my mom. have all my shit together like I said I've I'm going on two days of no sleep and uh, fighting and uh, drinking and smoking and working which is very new for me Um, no I do not have all of my shit together but I do thank you for listening. I do thank you for uh, paying attention, you know, when you can. And uh, hopefully either uh, tomorrow or Saturday. Oh, look, I know what days of the week it is. Um, I, I'll be a little sharper for you guys. I uh, thank you for listening. And now I really need to go eat something because I have not had anything since about... Five o'clock this morning, and it is about one twenty-five. And what I had wasn't all that much, anyway. You guys take care of yourselves. Uh, thank you for listening in. I'm Joe the Shirt. By the way, here's more Braille and uh, his song "Calculated Risk." I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and uh, hopefully, I'll talk to you in the next, mm, mm, let's say, day or two. We're just getting started. Count it off like this. One, two, three. IV. Intelligent rhymes with original styles. And we got Mr. James uh. Braille and Man Child. Uh. If you, if you want to know, wanna know the real deal, yeah. then here we uh. go. Under the God of the cross, being the amount of the cross, being me, don't amount to the loss. You see me know my fight on the flaws. To free me off of my own, I toss. So to the deep sea, breathing, I'll be tossed. Inhaling a frost, the cold summer's a cause. A ceiling I'm lost with no compass of cause and effect. But your pause to reflect for a moment. Taught to respect the atonement, I own it. You walk these steps as a grown man. With talk is a weapon that holds men. I fought with this lesson with no hands. Trying to know my savior, it's a risk. When your wrists are dying, a whole nature, it's a mind over nations of millions. The face of our children, the chase for the safety and buildings that make it so yielding is never an option of willing to weather with every cost.
straight up the pull in the push and got the information put in the books. I snuck into the library, till the bullets and shook it array, hook, line, and sinking in. Kids check it out and turn the pages so they think again. Believe it in and then read it between the hash marks, convert it into cliff notes, accelerate the fast start. I should pack the plan B before you move past freedom and even start to understand me. Telling you when your man freeze before you weave that reason into the fabric of the grand scheme. Man, I'm steamroll the competition at large. Point to the heavens, identify who's in charge. Far none, hard rocks, the ladies with the hard done. But behind the ears of burning up with the R sun. Call it what you want from big dreams to far flung. It don't stop till the war's won. It don't stop till the war's won. Hey, DJ Idol, can I get an introduction? Yeah. Come on, man, let's do this. I want to rock right now. Calculus. I counted the cost, accounted for the counterfeit when I encountered it. Stood my ground and the coward quit, cause he's powerless. So many challenges exist. Calculate the catalyst, cause and effect from catastrophic events. We gotta catapult past it, cast away doubt, it returns to.